Now, Mackenzie Sagalos has more in today's Tech Check. And Mackenzie, I, I sort of stopped short it, it, when I was reading about this. Maybe you can help explain because it called this a licensing deal, but then it said, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that the CEO of Grok is going to go work for NVIDIA and that it's not exclusive. <laughs> I'm like, well, what? Is this an acquisition or what is this? It's not an acquisition. They've been very specific in saying that. But this Grok deal came together in just a few days, and the structure to your point, Kelly, tells you a lot about where this market is headed. So non-exclusive licensing agreement where NVIDIA gets Grok's IP and its founder, Jonathan Ross, who helped build Google's TPU. And that's the secret sauce of this deal. It matters because the TPU has become NVIDIA's most credible competition. Google stock is up 65 percent this year, and a big part of that is its vertical stack. Its in-house chip has helped land major cloud deals with Anthropic and Meta. And now the guy who helped design that architecture is going to NVIDIA instead. Now, as for what NVIDIA gets technically, the AI industry is shifting from training models to running them at scale. That's called inference, and it's where a lot of the future revenue is coming from. NVIDIA sees Grok's design as a way to own that next phase. And relative to its $4.6 trillion market cap, $20 billion isn't that big a bet. But the deal structure also matters here. Gil Loria at DA Davidson telling me that these contracts are often set up so that big VC investors get paid while employees may not get as much as in a traditional acquisition. And then there's NVIDIA's cash problem. It's sitting on $60 billion and has been looking to aggressively deploy it. $100 billion proposed for OpenAI, $5 billion into Intel, backing CoreWeave ahead of its IPO. So this deal lets them add inference capabilities while keeping a competitor off the board, which is really a win-win here, Kelly. Right, or keeping regulators off their cases, as it may be. I also read that this company makes... LPUs, language processing units, and I, maybe I'm inventing the LPU moniker, but it said, again, that these are less compute intensive than GPUs, and it sounds like we're going to hear a lot more about these alternative forms that are meant more specifically to be used with AI models as opposed to just kind of the power-hungry GPUs. Precisely, and semi-analysis actually put out a report this morning pointing to the fact that while the first generation of what Grok was producing uh, wasn't as competitive as NVIDIA's models, there are two more coming down the pike quite soon, and that uh, NVIDIA and Jensen Wong might have been reading the tea leaves there and wanting to get ahead of it, license their tech before AMD or Broadcom could get there. What's also interesting is the fact that Grok actually just slashed its 2025 revenue projections by 75%. So then you what? think, all right, well, what was the... Exactly. So what's a competitive advantage here? And it does come down to chip design. Grok's chips essentially keep data on the processor itself, which could help NVIDIA bypass a key bottleneck in the process, which is memory chip shortages and price hikes. So NVIDIA's GPUs rely heavily on high bandwidth memory and a supply chain controlled by just a handful of firms. This helps them get around that. Hmm. I wonder if that would have implications for Micron. But you said the company just slashed its own revenue forecast by 75 percent? It, it did. Um, and I will wow. say this. I, I, this deal in particular also shows how hard it is to challenge NVIDIA, even with billions in VC funding. And we are seeing this wave of consolidation. So it's not just Grok. You've got Intel reportedly in talks to buy Samba Nova. Meta just acquired an AI chip company, Revos, in October and hired the team behind Untether AI, which also develops chips for running AI models. So we're just seeing a lot of movement here. Indeed. I appreciate you having all that.